Fallout is better than The Last of Us. It is. And if you disagree with me, you're wrong. And I'm gonna tell you why. Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm making this video because I have decided I am a knight of the Brotherhood of Steel. I am a soldier in the wasteland. I will die on the hill that is Fallout is the best video game adaption we've had. It is better than The Last of Us. When The Last of Us came out a year or two ago, I watched it, I was very excited for it, being a big fan of the game, and I found it utterly boring. Soulless, boring, it was just not good. Like, from a production level, yes, it's good, it's well made, yes, it's HBO, of course the production is good, of course most of the acting was good, but it just fell completely flat for me. The most bizarre thing was that apparently I was the only person in the world that felt that way because everyone said this is the best show ever, the best video game adaption ever. It had great reviews. I didn't understand and I actually caught a little bit of flack from it because my opinion was, as I said, this is soulless, heartless, boring TV. And I stand by that to this day. And that's why I want to talk about this topic today. Fallout has come out. It's getting a little bit of buzz. My reactions are getting next to no views. I feel like people aren't talking about Fallout the way we talked about The Last of Us. That could be because Fallout was dumped in one go. I wish we had it weekly, so there could be more chat about it, more hype building up to the season finale. When things are just dropped nowadays, it's just like, oh, oh, that's right. It's all there. There's eight hours of brilliant Fallout content just on Amazon. So I think that affects the conversation. Even so, I just don't see people talking about Fallout like they did The Last of Us. And that's why we're here, soldiers. We need to boost the Fallout word of mouth. I just finished all my reactions to Fallout. I pretty much review each episode in those reactions. But to review the whole series really quickly, I think it's amazing and it's sticking with me. It started off as fun with a simple plot, uh, almost like a video game plot. We need to find the thing. You had the three main characters, clear, concise setup, lots of comedy, lots of great action, everything about the show I loved. And then in that final episode, it got really serious and the bigger picture opened up and it finished on a cliffhanger seeing New Vegas that just blew me away. As a casual fan, you don't see me excited for things often and I don't get excited for things often. New Vegas? <laughs> I can't believe that. New Vegas. Ah! <laughs> yes! So for Fallout, to do that to me speaks volumes. I love the show. I think every aspect of it was perfectly executed. Production, acting, the visual style, everything. It is perfect at adapting that Fallout world. Now, you can take or leave certain plot choices, certain characters, certain motivations if you want. It's not necessarily a perfect narrative, a perfect show, but it is a perfect adaptation of Fallout. And I think season two will be better. Now to bring it back to The Last of Us, the thing I praise most about Fallout is that it's an original story in the world. I made a video game discussion video months ago where I talked about Fallout and what I would want to see in an adaption. I'll play it for you now. Fallout, make it a movie, TV show, whatever. Has to be an original idea. Do not adapt 
the story from any of the games. Just take the world and set your own story in it. Action, drama, epicness, it's all there. It's all ready to go. Let's see if the TV show pulls it off. Fallout has to be tongue in cheek, but still serious. I pretty much predicted the show. What I'm trying to say is, Fallout did that. The Last of Us, I mean, it can't do that because it's set in the real, real world. But the best parts of The Last of Us were the parts that weren't a direct copy of the game. Think about the two prologue scenes we had in episode one and two. Episode one, seeing, um, it was like the 60s, that news show talking about viruses. That was foreboding and really cool. Episode two, we saw, I think it was Malaysia, where we see like patient zero. Really cool, not in the game. Episode three, the entire episode is fantastic. That was the best part of The Last of Us. Everything outside of those three examples I have for you were just copies of the game, exact copies. So you're not adding to what we already have. All we're really doing with The Last of Us is exposing the narrative of the game on a different medium to more people. I don't want to call it lazy, but I certainly don't want to praise something for just copying a game that did it better 10 years before. I think that's a fair thing to say. I think that's incredibly fair. Fallout, they had to create the story, the sets, the world, out of their own imagination. The Last of Us, sure, you had to change certain set pieces, certain locations, but they just scatter some junk around it's the post-apocalypse, put a few vines on a building in CGI, and that's it. Copy the game, copy the shots from the game, and that's it. Again, I'm not trying to do a disservice to the work that went into The Last of Us, and I'm certainly not trying to bash people that like the show. I'm just making the point, and I've said it a few times now, Fallout is better. You wanna have sex? And if we can be honest, The Last of Us was so self-important, pretentious, masturbatory melodrama. Think about it. It really just was all about itself. Look at us, we're the last of us. Look how important we are. I saw a behind the scenes thing for episode three of The Last of Us when that came out. As I said, watch my review for that as well. That's a beautiful episode, very well done. Great story. Structurally, it's weird to just have this one-off episode in this show. Anyway, the behind the scenes, all they talked about was, we hired a gay director. We hired gay writers. We hired a gay editor. Murray is a married, middle-aged gay man. Peter Hoare, the director who did such a beautiful job, is a married, middle-aged gay man. Tim Good, the editor, is a married, middle-aged man. Our unit production manager, Cecil O'Connor, is a married, middle-aged gay man. Hey bro, I'm just here for a video game adaption. I, whoop de doo you're very important, you hired gay people. Can we stop pretending we live in the 50s? No one cares about all this political shit. Just give us stories, it's that simple. I'm not trying to get political. Okay, let's have a look at some direct comparisons now to really hammer home my point. Let's talk about the characters first. We have Lucy McLean, beautiful character, acted brilliantly, charisma up to the max. Ella Purnell did a masterful job playing Lucy. She's incredibly likable, absolutely watchable. I wanna see more of Lucy. How often can I say, I wanna see more of a character in a modern anything? Rare. Bella Ramsey as Ellie. She really swears a lot. Maximus, a bit of an idiot, a clunkhead, falls in love easily, just wants to be in some power armor. I can relate. Dry humor, funny. I loved Maximus. He's, he's really weird and really strange guy and has one of the best lines in the series. Do you want to make my cock explode now? <laughs> Again, like Lucy, I want to see more of Maximus. A great co-lead for a TV show. Hollywood's man of the hour, Pedro Pascal, 
plays Joel. Boy. He's really cranky all the time. I don't remember Joel from the game being cranky all the time. Yeah, he's gruff, he's stern, but he's not miserable. That's the thing about The Last of Us. It's miserable. Just because the world's ended doesn't mean everyone's miserable. Where's the heart and humanity? That's what The Last of Us was missing. It's about the last of us. Me and you, us. I don't know about what Hollywood thinks, but just about everyone in real life likes to laugh and is somewhat funny in their own way. There are very few people that walk around the planet just <clears throat> gruff all the time. And guess what? They're the people that no one wants to be around. So why would you make the lead of your show that person? The ghoul, a badass character. We can relate this to Joel as well. Fallout has three leads, The Last of Us two. Soon to be three. The ghoul is the older guy, been through a lot. Walton Goggins, charisma, heart. He has a darkness to him and he is gruff throughout most of the series. But you see the humanity come through, even with all that prosthetics. Pedro Pascal, I think you're a good actor and I have liked you in a lot of things. I don't know if it was the direction or your acting choices, but you were just bored. I think Fallout wins for characters. Ding! Plot. Now, plot between the two shows is going to be a hard one to compete against. Fallout tells a rather, I don't want to say generic, but it's a MacGuffin story. We're trying to track this little thing in this head, and that's the genesis of most of the actions in the show. The Last of Us, we all know The Last of Us's story, Beautiful story about humanity getting across country, a cure to this virus, blah, blah, blah. Now, where I will put these two shows at odds is the presentation to the audience. Fallout from the beginning tells its story. It sets it up in episode one, finishes the story in episode eight and leaves the door open for more. The Last of Us sets it up in episode one, delivers a little bit more in episode two, Episode three just comes to a screeching halt. Episode four and five could have been one episode because they were just some boring offshoot in another city with this terrible woman playing this intimidating character. And then the show skips character development and just ends. They're actually kind of similar in a lot of ways. The cross country, we fall into different scenarios with different characters in each episode structure. They're kind of similar in that way, actually, now that I think about it. But the presentation, I feel like as an audience watching Fallout, you had the thrust of the story and you wanted to know where it was gonna go. The Last of Us, it's like a walking simulator, the game. But if you're not in the game and controlling the characters, you lose that connection. So really, the show was just watching people walk a lot of the time and the presentation was boring. It's not as colorful as The Last of Us. I don't think on a cinematic level, the way it looks was anywhere close to Fallout. And when you're talking about the ending, the game, how it cut to black, it was like, yeah, wow, great. But like I said, you were there for 10 hours with these characters playing the game. You feel like you are those characters through that physical connection to playing a game and holding a controller. In the show, Episode 9, Joel just makes a decision that changes the course of human history, supposedly, on a whim. Like, it didn't feel earned. Everything in Fallout feels earned because the characters stayed true to themselves all the way through and ended on a great cliffhanger for what's to come, whilst also wrapping up the story of Season 1. The Last of Us just sort of ends, as I said, Characters make decisions that you question, it ends, and then you're just sitting there like, oh, great, I think Fallout wins? Let's talk about the worlds between these two shows. I think it's quite obvious who's going to win here. Fallout's world is incredible. It's vibrant. Every single image has so much going on. There's that famous reference from the Phantom Menace, Rick McCallum, 
interview. It's so dense, every single image has so many things going on. It's so dense, every single frame has so much going on. And it's true, but it's not distracting in Fallout. The vaults, vault tech, the lore of Fallout. The world is insanely deep and rich. All these different faction relationships. The post-apocalypse is brilliantly brought to life in Fallout. In The Last of Us, it is as well. I think the way everything looks in The Last of Us, that's probably how things should look and would look in that situation. Unfortunately, Fallout wins almost unfairly here because it has more to offer. Fan service. Fallout is full of fan service from stim packs to random creatures you see to the sound effects from the video game in the show. The music. There is so much fan service in Fallout, but it's not distracting in a way like The Force Awakens was, where Finn turns on the chessboard in the Millennium Falcon randomly and goes, what's this? That's fan service that's like, aha! Where in Fallout, things are just as they are. You see a cutaway to Radaway, and you're like, oh, that's cool. But the Radaway is being used to get rid of rads, or a stim pack. You're like, oh, that's cool. And it's used to heal a gunshot wound or something. And you're like, oh, it's functional as well. It's not just a distracting, hey, look at this thing. So Fallout's fan service is incredible. The Last of Us's fan service, I can't even think of any fan service. It's not really a story in a world that lends itself to fan service. So like World in our previous competition, Fallout wins almost unfairly here. <music> Visuals. Here's a comparison between the two shows, how they look. Both different styles. Again, it's gonna be a subjective view on this. The Last of Us is a more handheld, wider frame, documentary style look. It's paler. The colors aren't as saturated. It's shot digitally. I don't like the way The Last of Us looked. I never did, unfortunately. Hey, shoot me. Fallout, however, looks beautiful. Shot on film, rich colors, Beautiful, harsh, dark blacks, film grain. The, the lenses, they sort of uh, blur the vignette of the frame. Fallout has character in the way it looks. Fallout looks like it was shot on cameras from the 60s, like a spaghetti western. That's what it looks like. You know, just that massive wide frame. The Last of Us just looks like, I'm a HBO executive now, hey, have we got any digital cameras lying around? Yeah, that one. Uh, give that to The Last of Us production. Yeah, whatever. It felt like thought went into Fallout's look from the very beginning, the genesis of it, where The Last of Us, it's sort of like, yeah, let's just go with a documentarian style. Um, yeah, grab a digital camera, we're good. Fallout wins for me. It might not for you, but Fallout wins for me. I think this is one of the most beautiful looking series I've seen. <laughs> I actually don't have much more to say. I'm sick of comparing these two shows. Talking about The Last of Us, to me, makes me feel ick, like sick and ill. It's like a dirty, ugh. The Last of Us just makes me feel bad. The game is not a happy story, but it's a great story and it's a great world with great characters. For me, the adaption is just, it's, it's, it's not fun. It's not even enjoyable. It's not entertaining. It's not engrossing. It's just, Dirty. It's like, ugh, I don't want to watch this. It's gross. Fallout, I could go back and watch that again, the whole series. And I think I might without having a camera on me. So I can just sit there in peace and quiet and enjoy it. Guys, at the end of the day, I just wanted to make this video, as I said, to be like, hey, Fallout is incredible. I loved every second of it. Every second of it. There was not a second watching Fallout where I was bored, where I was sitting there like, uh, there wasn't a single joke that felt cringy, out of place. There wasn't a plot line that was like, why are we doing this? I thought watching Fallout, when they started doing the vault plot line, 
with Lucy's brother, I thought, no, no, this is gonna be boring. It was one of the better plot lines. Everything about Fallout is incredible. Do yourself a favor, watch it, support it. I can't believe I'm saying you gotta support it like I'm talking about some indie movie, big Hollywood production, whatever. But it deserves attention. It deserves praise. It deserves viewership. Because if people in positions of power see that there's good word of mouth, good reception, good viewership, we get more things like that. And if we want the tide to turn, if you're sick of getting Ahsoka, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Miss Marvel, She-Hulk, then watch Fallout. It feels like love brought to a screen. People with passion making something because they love it and they want you to love it. That's Fallout. It bleeds passion. It's like me talking to you now. I'm very passionate. You can feel my passion, can't you? Because I want you to feel my passion. That's Fallout. It wants you to love Fallout and I love Fallout. I don't know why I am still talking. I've repeated myself over and over and over again. Hey, Last of Us fanboys, fuck you. <laughs> Okie dokie.